the best finishing badge method. And you guys showed some massive support on my shooting badge video, which if you didn't catch that, man, I'll leave a link in the description, but that's not about this video. Today, I'm gonna get right into it, helping you guys with the best finishing badge method to get your badges in one day. Now, when we're going through this breakdown, I'm gonna do it in a tutorial fashion. That means I'm gonna give you the correct badges to unlock in order, and also, I'm gonna be assuming two things. You are gonna be playing the My Career Story, so that means starting off in college, working your way through the summer league and the PIT, and then going into your rookie year, not skipping. And then also you're gonna be playing on pro with 12 minute quarters. This is gonna be the fastest way to get your badges instantly and also be efficient with the games that you're trying to get done as fast as possible. So the good thing about finishing badges off the rip is that we don't have to worry about a jump shot. But when you go into the college game, say you're just going after finishing badges off the rip. The first badge you wanna go after when you unlock is teardropper. The first five badges I would say you need to put to these two here, Teardropper and Pro Touch. These are gonna be the most important badges going through the grind of my career because you wanna make sure you get each and every opportunity to finish your floater layups each and every time you score. Now I know this does interfere with you potentially playing park or rec or whatever the situation may be, but trust me, if you're going through the my career grind, you can get this all done in one day, actually in a few hours if you just stick to it and grind. Now I know I just gave you a little gem there, but if you would do me a favor and subscribe to the channel and also turn on those notifications, that way you never miss any of my NBA 2K20 videos, hey, I would truly appreciate it. So now that we can get into the method, the first thing you wanna do is work to the right or the left hash. With that, you're gonna tap L1 if you're on the PS4 or LB if you're on the Xbox, and you're gonna call for quick isolation. From there, you're gonna pass it to the person at the top of the key once they are established at the top of the key, cut behind your defender and attempt a floater. Now, I did put the prompts on the screen to teach you guys how to do those two things. But if you don't know, a floater is hold left stick up and right stick down. And then once you complete the floater, before you have the badge, you'll get a set of fans. But once you do have the teardropper badge, you'll see the teardropper icon light up each and every time. Now, once again, you're gonna cut behind your defender and that should give you the easiest opportunity to catch and score. Now, I'm gonna show you an attempt with it as you're getting stopped. Once you call for quick isolation, there are times where the defender will sometimes run the route for you. If you so happen to get nudged or bumped, most times the defender is gonna honestly steal the ball from you. And with that, you don't want that happening too many times because that does punish you for a bad call for pass. So once again, you wanna make it a straight line as much as possible behind the defender. And from there, you should be able to retrieve the ball and then have your floater attempt. Now, when it comes to fast break situations, of course, I would say leak out, but be disciplined as possible. So try not to rush and get to the rim and take floaters over two or three people or even one defender. Try to take your time, get to the hash, cut behind the defender on a clean cut, and from there, you should be able to get an easy finish for you. And also, on fast breaks that you get the ball early, I would suggest you run wide. The reason is because the defender in the middle of the court most of the time wants to protect the rim, but if you can draw that defender out of the middle, you can at least run wide and have an easy cut back door along the baseline to get you an easy green floater. Now, this is a method that you can actually do within takeover. This will give you the benefit, especially if you have to lock takeover because you get a speed boost. Just blow by your opponent, throw that thing up, and hey, it's butter going down for you. Now, another thing I wanna warn you about is that there are situations where the person at the top of the key won't find you on time as you see there that I tried to call for the ball. If you are early in the shot clock, just take your time, reset back at the hash, call for quick isolation once again, and you can still pass it to that same person and just call for it on a clean line to the rim and you still should have an easy opportunity at a floater. And once again, guys, you wanna do this on a high field goal percentage because you wanna make sure you get as much rep as possible without losing just because you're missing too many floaters. And as far as a goal that I would give you to push for on each and every game, I would go 35 floaters a game, which should equal to around 70 points. If you can get to that on a good field goal percentage, that would be a good look for you, especially being able to get more than a badge and a half a game. 
So I hope this video helped you in the slightest when it comes to trying to get your finishing badges and you should be able to get at least 10 in a day. So if you're trying to grind for at least 10 or more, you should at least get 10 or 11 in a day. If you stay consistent, put on a movie while you're trying to grind or maybe your favorite cartoon or even some Till House videos that'll help you out. So outside of that, my people, I appreciate you guys. Make sure to like, subscribe to the channel. Also turn on those notifications. That way you never miss a video when I drop one. And hey, my people, I appreciate you. I'll see you in the next one.